I was on a coaching call with my poker athletes this week when an interesting conversation came up around the ego and how it causes so many problems for you at different phases of your poker career. And just when you think you've evolved past your ego, it remodels itself and causes more problems later in your career. So what are we talking about when we talk about the ego? First of all, it's your sense of self your sense of separateness from everything around you. And it's also often your sense of self-importance, why you are better or why you should have the results that you think you should. All right, so this single identity of self-construct of what you created of who you think you are. Now, early in your career, it's quite easy to spot the traps of the ego and where it's kind of creating problems. Often it's coming from this kind of fear-based mindset of trying to prove to others that you're good enough at poker, trying to prove to yourself that you've got what it takes to have success. And some of the challenges early in your career are are with the ego in terms of thinking that it already knows stuff, all right? The ego generally tries to create a level of certainty around what it knows. And this often makes it difficult to take in new ideas and new perspectives. So as you're progressing early in your career, you've got to get past your ego by being open-minded, by not trying to Uh, prove that you're better than everybody and just to enjoy the game of learning and getting better. Now, what's interesting for me working with lots of players, especially when they get to kind of mid stakes and high stakes, is most players think they've evolved past the ego. They realize, ah, I used to have an ego, but now I'm okay. Now I don't have as much of an ego as I used to. And often what happens is the ego has just evolved and it's now taken on a different form. And when you're having success in your poker career, so you're playing mid or high stakes, often the ego redefines itself in the form of entitlement. Entitlement meaning you feel like you deserve a certain outcome. This happens also to players at lower stakes. I, I've approached many players who've have spoke about this at the struggling to beat lower stakes games, but still feeling that sense of entitlement. But it gets almost like compounded as you've had more success. And the narrative in your mind is, I deserve to win. I'm a good poker player. Why am I getting bad results when other players around me are getting good results? I should be winning. All right, and this is quite tricky to spot sometimes. And you'll notice this when you're on a downswing for a few months or a few weeks. You're moving up stakes and you're not getting the results you want. Or just your win rates and overall results aren't as good as you would like them to be. All right, and the ego's like, I deserve more. I deserve things to be better. All right, so you've got to watch the kind of the way the ego goes from this kind of fear-based, I need to prove stuff, to I deserve stuff, all right? And we can see why this happens. I'm sure like as you're later in your poker career, say two to five years in, you've put a lot of hours into poker. You probably rate yourself as pretty good at the game and you feel like you should be getting some rewards for your efforts. So the ego creates this construct of, I deserve more for my efforts than what I'm currently getting. So we had a bit of back and forth in this conversation about how to get past the ego. And in all honesty, it comes down to getting back into in tune with the variables that you control. So the ego tries to control outcomes, whereas when you really get past the ego, you go into to your own, own, own operating system and how you're showing up on a daily basis. And as we were going through this conversation, one of the players made a great kind of observation and he said, for me to get past the ego, it's all about changing my perspective from outcomes and what I'm trying to get to effort the effort I'm putting in. And I really resonate with this and I think it's a really powerful framework. Can you internally reward the effort that you're putting in over the outcomes you're trying to get? Now this is good because first of all, you control the effort. And second of all, you know when you're putting in the effort and you know when you're not. You can't cheat yourself. For example, people around you may be thinking, oh, you're doing a great job, you're trying really hard, but you know you're cruising. You're doing four out of 10 in terms of effort. Internally, that gets clocked as a score and you don't build the self-esteem in yourself because you know you could be doing more, all right? On the flip side, you could be doing 10 out of 10 efforts and getting really bad results in a certain area of your life, but you know I'm doing everything I can, at least everything you feel you can in that moment. And it creates this sense of self-confidence and self-esteem that is much more durable over the long run, all right? So we go from this kind of early in our career egos trying to prove stuff, then it morphs into entitlement, And then to get back to uh, getting control of the ego, we need to go back to effort. The effort I need to put in to get the outcomes I want and really doubling down because often when you've had success in poker, you get complacent. You start to think that you deserve 
certain outcomes and you almost like lose a little bit of that connection with the process and the effort put in. So now you go back and go, right, how do I go back into a model based on effort, which is all about controllable variables. It's the daily time you're putting in, it's your attention during, during your sessions, it's your performance in everything you're doing, and you know how much effort you're putting in. So I think when you get to this space, generally kind of mid to high stakes, or let's say two to five years into your career, you need to really double down on your model of effort and scoring yourself and grading yourself on how much you're applying yourself rather than the results you get. Because if you don't do that, the ego will very quickly create this construct of, I'm not getting the results I deserve, I'm entitled to more, and why am I not getting it? And this is very subtle. I've worked with players, the players in my community are generally very advanced when it comes to mindset, and even they struggle at times with this entitlement coming up, and when they're having downswings, all of a sudden they're like, I should be past this. I shouldn't be experiencing this emotion. I shouldn't be feeling this frustrated, but I do. And as soon as we unpack that together, we're like, oh, there it is, entitlement. There it is, attachment to results. There it is, you want outcomes or wanting to get to an external metric quicker than the speed you're currently getting. Ah, interesting. If we take a step back, we can go, okay, what do we actually need to focus on? The effort we're putting in, the controllable variables about our behaviors and time. And if we do that, over time, we can transcend the ego's pull. Hopefully you enjoyed this short video. If you did, smash the like button before you go. There's gonna be plenty more videos from me very soon.